Crossroads Media. Depressing. Depressing, depressing, depressing. What's not depressing, though, is Coffee with Broads, Monday and Thursday at 11 a.m. The way you sign up, well, you join the YouTube community here at Broads Media, $4.99 a month. And if you also join, you also get, I butchered that, you also will get access to our Discord channel where we get to communicate live 24-7 when things happen. So make sure you check out all the information down below and enjoy this depressing pod. We're doing this. Huh? Come on, man. We're doing this. They just got abused in Montreal. You want to listen to the last, what, six games or so? Since March 28th, they lose 4-1, to one, ironically enough, in Montreal. Then they played the Chicago Blackhawks at home. I was at that game. I thought it would be fun to watch Connor Bedard, but it would be more entertaining to see the Flyers put up a six-point spot there. A six, six to one. Kick their ass six to one. That's what I mean. And maybe you get, I don't know, a shorthanded goal, a power play goal. The juice is rocking. Instead, you get bent over. Then you had the New York Islanders overtime loss, but it was the awesome play by Morgan Frost to tie it up with under 10 seconds to go so you grab a point and it was this moral victory before Morgan Frost turned the puck over in the middle of the ice in the D zone whatever 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 you lose 4-2 in Buffalo you lose 6-2 in Columbus that team sucks sucks and it gets capped off with a 9-3 to beatdown that was really even worse than that. Yo, yo, yeah, oh, yeah, oh, oh, yeah, that the actual game played out where 9-3 doesn't even tell you how bad of a loss it is. Do you know how disgusting of an effort it needs to be? Jamie Drysdale and... Travis Sanheim, you should be embarrassed. You should be so pissed off. I don't want you sleeping for one second tonight. It should keep you up until the next time you get a chance to get on the ice. But honestly, according to John Tortorella, if you ever play bad, you don't deserve to be in the lineup the next night. So that means these guys should be getting scratched, right? Because that's what he did to Sean Couturier. And ever since, there has been question marks. Now, to be fair, If I'm going to be true to myself, I don't blame Tortorella as much as everybody else seems to be blaming John Tortorella. When it's this ugly, every single party is involved. Every single person is doing things that are bad. It's just reality. There's no one doing anything good when you're losing 9-2, to 9-3, to three, when you're getting beat up by Chicago. You all are doing horrendous. So that is still true. But all of a sudden, as bad as that two-game scratch decision was, and I did not like the message it sends to scratch a captain, I, I didn't like it. I didn't like it. He wasn't playing well, but you deserve a long leash and some respect if you're Coots. And when you disrespect him, the players feel disrespected. But at the other side of it, there's a part of me that goes, if you're in that room and John Tortorella through 70 plus games has had you in an overachieving position and in a spot to make the playoffs be third in the Metropolitan and play strong, sound, structured hockey. Full 200-foot game, if you will. Eventually, the power play would butt you, but this isn't just a power play problem, even though it is extremely difficult to watch. If you're going to get beat down and so broken after Torch do 70-plus games led you pretty damn well because of two games that they took someone out of the lineup and then you collapse this bad, if that is the case... I'm really disturbed by our room. So it doesn't take pressure off the messenger, okay? Because John Tortorella did hit wrong buttons. But hitting wrong buttons and failing doesn't automatically mean the locker room is lost. If that continues to happen, then no doubt about it. But so far, Torts has done an amazing job until this very uncomfortable stretch. And he is a part of this. But you don't lose the locker room 
that quickly, especially these young kids, the Owen Tippets, the Noah Cates. Uh, th- this is sort of uh, my, my NHL life is on the line. I do think that that's in play here. It's not some veteran group that can all just sort of run you out of town. The Boston Bruins locker room means more than the Boston Bruins head coach. They can get you fired. They can get you moved on from. Look at what they had prior in Bruce Cassidy. He's no longer, I mean, that's that's crazy. That's crazy. But you don't have that here. You you have Travis Sanheim trying to show the world that he can still compete. You have Cam York who has taken strides in the right direction. And, uh, you know, he's not perfect by any means. But I think I'm the highest I've been on Cam York in totality. So, you know, Travis Konechny who's been scoring a lot of goals this year. Scott Lawton, who should have been traded twice already by this franchise, but he's still here. They love him to death. Uh, You're telling me that Scott Lawton doesn't have the mutual respect for the logo to bust his balls on the line? Like, he might not be as good as I want him to be, and they should have traded him twice already. Twice! Twice! You hear me? They fell in love with Nick Sealer and Scott Lawton. They told me they weren't going to fall in love with Nick Sealer and Scott Lawton, and they sure did. But I don't think that these guys just quit after a two-game decision. I I just don't think that's the case. So I do think that there's a separation between how dysfunctional the leader is and how dysfunctional the core is right now. They are hitting a big-time panic button. As soon as the other team scores a goal one minute in, which is blasphemy that that's even happening to start, how about we grow some stones? How about we play for 20, 40 minutes and, and we take charge and we're up to nothing? The second something bad goes happen, uh, that uh, something happens and goes bad, uh, which happens to happen super soon, as soon as the puck is dropped, how you should be focused. I think this group is young and the pressure is getting to them. And yes, it's on the head coach to make them feel as comfortable as humanly possible. And when you're scratching your your captain and your leader, you're making them in more uncomfortable positions. You're putting them in more uncomfortable positions. I, I can't even talk because I can't even process how the hell this team is in a position now where they're behind the Penguins. Here's the Penguins from the dead. They're taking it from you. That should piss you off. And do not try and somehow convince yourself that it's a good thing because it's really setting the Penguins up for failure. They got to be rebuilding. Instead, this is this fake play up here. Stop it. They got Sidney Crosby, Mark, and Latan. You get in with that bunch. You get in with that crew. And yeah, it's not likely that they win the Stanley Cup. But I'm going to make fun of that when this is what our hockey team is doing. Somehow a team with expectations to flop really broke us when we knew what they were going to be, which is probably not a playoff team, but it's how it went. It's the story of this group. I thought that they were better than this. I am stunned that they fallen, that's fallen to this point and it's gotten this bad. I'm stunned. 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 It's not typical. This is what the Flyers do. I know we've been to extreme win records and losing streaks. And the one year that you end up having a losing streak, you make the playoffs. The one year you have the crazy win streak, you don't make the playoffs. Yeah, I, I get it. To a degree, you can draw lines. But in previous years... You thought you were seriously competing the whole way. This was a fun overachieve that plummeted insanely. And I guess to be fair to the franchise, even though they didn't know about it in the offseason, that Carter Hart would most likely be tangled up with this story out of London, Ontario. But right now, you have a guy who came over from Russia who wasn't allowed to play for an entire season because the Russians demanded him to fight for their country so he couldn't even lace up the skates. He comes over here. We need him to be a number one netminder on a squad that's trying to make the playoffs in a city where the goaltender conversation is very loud and always will be very loud because they're always searching for the great one. And by the way, the second you come to town, the one that they thought was going to be the great one gets in trouble with sexual assault and has all these legal allegations he has to go through. You you see what I'm saying? You see what I'm saying? And Urson's not a number one goalie. So this is what we're doing. I think there's also some players in the room that just feel that when they give up a goal or two, 
there's not a lot of wiggle room with these netminders right now. There's no belief. I think that's really hurting the, the, the emotions. I think it's really hitting home that we don't have it back there. We don't have it back there, and it's got to be so demoralizing. Those timely saves never happen. How many times do we say they should have had that, both of them? Now, I need them to perform, and I've seen Urson actually do well and be strong and help you go on a run and make saves here and there that go, all right, nice, nice, we needed that. There was actually a time in this one, and Boosh even pointed it out on the broadcast. Timely saves haven't been active recently. That's one where I think Urson maybe could try and feel good again and then well we sort of saw what happened I think it's destroying any sort of life that this team has it's a combination of all of these things pressure young kids John Tortorella penalty kill power play you know because the penalty kill numbers there's been times where you're not excited about it all right just saying Power play. Moment being too big. The one thing that I don't understand from a Tortorella perspective, though, and he's mentioned this a handful of different times now, he'd say something along the lines of, we're still assessing. We're still trying to learn about some of these kids. Well, Joel Farabee, for example. I'm, I'm just trying to figure out who would fail so bad that they go, I don't want him anymore. It's not Tyson Forster. Is it Noah Cates? Do they not have as high of a ceiling on Noah Cates as maybe they thought previously? They thought it was a mini-me of Sean Couturier, but they realize that's not. I'm trying to figure out who could be that brutal where they go, no, no, thank you. We are done, and we're just getting rid of this guy. Is it a Joel Farabee? What are they going to do with Travis Konechny? I'd imagine they're going to sign him. But is he somebody? I don't think it's him. Torch just said a day ago or so during one of the off days when they had a practice down in Voorhees, and he said, I love coaching Travis Konechny. He's the energy of this team. We have that give and take. We have that relationship where I let him go, but he also allows me to be me. So we have to find that emotional tie. He's stressing how unbelievable of an experience that is as a coach. So I can't imagine it being him. There really isn't no assessing. This isn't about assessing anymore. Who are you assessing? If it's Sanheim, for example, who had a better year and we thought that that contract was going to kill us to death and he did not play well today. Him and Jamie Drysdale, it was so ugly. And I hate watching Eric Johnson and Mark Stoll. I swear to God, I could probably hang in there better than that decor. Just give me maybe three days to get myself conditioned again. You know what I'm saying? And then let me let me lace them up. Let me tape the twig. And let me just see if I can go out there, chip pucks, high off the glass, maybe eat a couple shots in the shin pad on the PK, be a nice locker room presence and tell the boys as they walk out on the ice, smack their ass, here we go boys, here we go boys, get the boys so fired up, you know what I'm saying, bang on the bench when something good's happening, I could provide more than Mark Stahl can right now in his career, it's mind numbing, it's mind numbing. So even someone like Travis Sanheim, the next couple of games, would that throw away everything that he did when he was playing top pair defensive minutes? And maybe the answer is yes. If the Flyers say yes, we learned about Sanheim game 75 to 82 and those other 75 games don't matter to me anymore, then we got your answer. Okay, then yes, then there are decisions made that you are going to look at and assess. I just don't think it's that strong of a sample size for it, even though you do learn things. There's a difference between learning things and then we have to get rid of this guy and we can no longer work with his assets. You know what I'm saying? It's very similar to the John Tortorella stuff. He has been bad, just like all the players have been bad bad. You lose 9-3. to three. Oh my God, that game to Chicago. I, I will relive it till the day I die. I'll be in my coffin. It'll be an open casket. So if any of you come one day, you'd say, hey, bro, thanks so much for the content. You leave a few flowers, say what's up to Brooklyn, and you go on your way, right? 
I want you to know that when I'm legging in that coffin, I'm thinking about that 5-1 to one loss to the Chicago Blackhawks because I had to experience it live. And when I went in there going, this is a no-brainer lock, I'm going straight money line. All right, I'm throwing down a couple mortgage payments on it. I didn't do that. But I did lose a nice chunk of change that I was winning over some of the March Madness and some college hoops and, and, and NBA hoops. And I'm bringing in a ton of cash. I got a lot of money to play with. That started my downward spiral of, well, guess what? I'm back to where I started. I was up 800, and now I'm back to pretty much even. Very disappointing. It all started with this game. So when I'm laying in that coffin, that's all. I just, I just wanted to make sure that you know that. How does it get here? How does it get here? Here. March 28th, 4-1 to one loss. Five to one loss, overtime loss, four to two loss, six to two loss, nine to three loss, not even involved. The second something goes wrong, you crumble within seconds. But John Tortorella, for as bad as he's been, at the end of the day, there's been a lot of great. And while he's been bad, do we throw away the other 70 games of the regular season? Same applies to when assessing these players. Yeah, I mean, they line themselves up where they don't get the really big pick and they don't get that sexy lottery pick because they were the Chicago Blackhawks or the uh, the the Anaheim Ducks of a few years ago, the Columbus Blue Jackets, where you bottom out and you free fall. So you, you sort of don't have the heartstrings pulled with whatsoever over 82. You're not going to win a ton. It is going to be ugly, but you have to bet on the long run here and sort of give us a leash to work with this plan. That's not what they did, though, right? That's not what they did. They went through an, a, a pretty insane gauntlet. I'd say held their own. They were snagging points here and there and methodically got through it. I don't know if they put so much emphasis on those games against Toronto, against Boston, right? I mean, there was a lot of stock on how will they survive, and they did pretty well. They did enough, there's no doubt. Did they focus so much on it that the second it ended, they let their foot off off the gas because they thought it would be a cakewalk because they thought it would be easy just to fly to Columbus and handle business. Uh, well, then that would go on the leadership of Nick Sirianni for sure. I don't compare this to the Eagles though. And the reason why I don't think this is the same collapse and the same combo between John Tortorella and Nick Sirianni, Nick Sirianni I don't think had an answer from a schematic level. I don't think he knows from a scheme level, an X and O level, how to coach the game of football. It is a legitimate concern of mine. So, I don't look at that with John Tortorella, though. His strong defensive-minded play, his ability to put structure in there. Travis Sanheim has turned his career around. Cam York is an exciting young player and a defenseman that we're absolutely all agreeing. I think if you have eyeballs and a brain, that he is starting to take a big-time step up and take a huge stride. I think from a hockey level that John Tortorella knows significantly more than Nick Sirianni does from a schematic coaching level in their both respect sports. So that's how I totally, totally remove that debate or remove the similarities. It, it's not similar. It's not similar. I don't see it the same way everybody else does. All right, why don't we take some anytime hotline calls? The reaction to the Flyers game was not a good one. It was not pretty. And of course, when you finally get into position to maybe find some life with the casual fans, we can finally tap into the market of, you know, people who like to watch when things are good and there's excitement and the team's playing well. You can relate to the team. That's always fantastic. We finally started to hit that wave of casual fan and then now what up oh, typical flyers so now you're flirting around uh, the middle of the draft even though I still demand Danny Briere to get great picks and to get great players with those picks okay I, I can't say well you get a free pass to fuck up because you got the 12th pick instead of the fourth pick no 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 you got to find talent there's talent there I promise you you get paid to have a team surrounding you you got a bunch of scouts that travel the world so you can get more information than others and find the great talent, do it, do it. You're still drafting at a reasonable spot, do it. 
but it is sort of worst case scenario because you're getting the worst of it all. You're getting the emotional damage. You're getting the actual questions on why did it crumble as bad as it did. If they just finished short and they were maybe the Penguins, for example, you looked so out of it for a while, you find a way to maybe just create a little bit of noise surrounding your team, you get into the third spot, you lose it the following night because the Red Wings win, but then you're still sort of there and you win a nice game. And, you know, it's like, whoa, okay. There's something to that late surge, that late push. You're leaving the locker room for the last time, even though you didn't make the playoffs. There's a good vibe. There's a good taste in your mouth. Now there's this sour talk already and reasonably so but you're leaving on such a negative note it could be damaging if you thought this was tense and it is and you and you failed can you handle the intense start of next season when those questions are already put on the label of this team just gets right back at it no breathing room it's time have the answers because that's sort of how we demand things around here So it is sort of in a weird spot for the Flyers all around. All right, we'll take some anytime hotline calls, though, and let the people speak about this. Ew. Gross. Hey, bro, it's Carter Goche here. Just want to say, I told you so. (laughs) I don't even know what to say. I don't even know what to say. I'm a little stunned. I hate Cutter Gauthier to death. Uh, He doesn't deserve to be able to make those type of claims about this franchise, about this organization. No matter what's happening right now, these are two totally different things. I don't want to hear it. I don't think today is the day that I even need to get sucked down that little path because I'm already emotionally hurt and I'm already upset and I'm already disappointed. So please, don't. I don't want to deal with it. But what a loser. An absolute loser. I can't stand them. All right, I'm going to the next call. I don't want to do that. I should be disgusted with my own team, and I am disgusted with my own team. Let's go back to the phones. Hey, bro. Uh, I'm watching the Flyers get their ass kicked. Six nothing now for the second time they're getting their ass kicked by the Canadians. I guess the season can best be summed up the same as their power play. They get a lot of chances, but never finish. Yeah, I'm thinking Risto, Atkinson, Faraby, just in my personal opinion, down. Continue the rebuild. Let's go Flyers. I can't believe you said 6 nothing, and I'm like, oh, yeah, well, 6 nothing. So they put up seven goals. Eight goals, actually. Scored nine goals. It looked like frozen pond hockey. All right. You know, my wife always looks at me like I got 50 heads because whenever we're driving in an area that we're not normally accustomed to driving in and I see a little pond, I go, huh, that'd be great for pond hockey. You go, what does your brain do? How does your brain work? What do you mean? If it freezes over, you can throw out some nets and chuck some sauce. How does your brain not think about that? Because there's nothing better than when there's snot running down your nose. You got Under Armour on underneath the three G. Jackets, your stick handle, and throwing a little backhand cheese. You know what I'm saying? There's nothing like it. How does your brain not think about that? That's what I'm saying. How do you drive past that and not think pond hockey? And she looks at me like I got 10 heads. But that's what that game felt like. I was playing EA Sports Hockey League, and I was doing three-on-three, and there's people surrounding the glass, and I'm just casually chucking sauce on a two-on-one with a goalie that's getting beat to the far post, one-timer tapping for the ninth of the night. This is the National Hockey League. It's the National Hockey League. With your playoff lives on the line with the team that you most recently played, not as if it was the game prior, but I'm saying you recently went into action with this team and that sort of started the trend of disappointment. So maybe you'd have some toughness. Maybe you guys would have a personality to respond and say, we'll end it tonight. It sucks that it sort of went out of control. But let's do something about it because we're running out of time. You know how they responded to that? 9-3. 9-3. Joke. What's Amadeo thinking? 
Uh, well, this stinks. This stinks. <laughs> There's not much more that you can even really ask for. Or even anything. This just sucks. There is no way, shape, or form that any of us saw this happening. And now, once again, it's the same old song and dance. You're in hockey purgatory, once again. You're not good enough to make the playoffs. You're not bad enough to get a high draft pick. You're in Tweenersville, and that's the worst place you want to be in hockey. It's just, yes, the season, there's a lot of positives that you can take from the season, but my, mostly the eyes are going to be focused on this late season collapse because it's inexcusable. It really is. It just is. Your goaltending fell apart. You couldn't score goals. Your defense fell apart. Your penalty kill fell apart. And then the same old song and dance of your power play stunk. And it stunk a lot. This team did a lot of stinking. It's a big off season here for Danny Briere to do a lot of things here. Question marks. Did this team actually give up on torts, which personally I don't believe. The whole crap with the Katoria captaincy and how the team reflected on that. There's a lot of problems right now with this team. It's a lot of work for Danny Briere. I understand I'm still, you know, hopeful on the future with this team. But boy, does this suck. Boy, does this suck. I think that's perfectly said, Amadeo. I really feel very similar to you and where you stand. I don't think they quit on Tortorella. That doesn't mean that this is any less unacceptable. This thing is absolute garbage. This is the worst of the worst. I mean, this is arguably insane. Like, in insanity. Insanity. This is wild level of collapse. It just is. After all the expectations that started to grow. After things really looked promising. And to your credit and to your point. Yeah, Tyson Forster. There's a lot here. Uh, Win Tippett, his ability to score goals, his speed, as his size. We love it. Cam York, as I alluded to. Still thought it was a positive direction for Travis Sanheim. I like Jamie Drysdale, even though this is a rough day to even talk about him. He's nowhere close to Cutter Gauthier's ceiling, and I said that at the time. That's why I was very annoyed that that kid decided I don't want to be in town anymore because he's going to be a star. And I don't know if Drysdale is a star. I think he could be a very good defenseman, but there's a difference. But still promising, but when you lose this way, all of it goes out the window. At least I think it does. What a deflating night. All right, everybody. Those are my thoughts. Appreciate it. We'll be talking soon.